I have another flashlight review for you today. It is the Madame Minkle MT911 handheld searchlight. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Flashlight Brand for sending me the Madame Minkle MT911 handheld searchlight so that I could share it with you. So as always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this light as well as its physical and performance specifications. I'll go over its modes of operation. Then of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. Just before we take a closer look at the Madaminko MT911, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So this is the box of the light arrived in. Very simple, nice box diagram of the light on the outside, named Madaminko on that side. But it's more important as what, of course, was inside of the box. Now, uh, before we start, I just want to point out that there are two versions of this light available. There is the basic version, which is retailing right now at Flashlight Brand for $59. 95 at the time of this recording, but there is also a fully equipped a kit with all the accessories, and that's what Flashlight Brand sent me, and it's retailing at $72.95. So all the accessories that I show you now, with, with the exception, of course, of a few of the standards, are what come with the expanded kit. So what does it come with? Well, right off of the top, of course, there is a Type-C charging cable, USB Type-C charging cable. We'll talk more about the cable in a few moments time because there is a, a something I want you to see on that. I almost missed, but of course you can't miss the fact that there is an owner's manual with warranty information. Small bag containing two O-rings for the battery tube of the light and a lanyard. Kind of unique for this is that there are three silicone diffusers which will go on the front of the light at the basal. I'll demonstrate doing that later. Uh, in playing around with them, I found that the white one gave a nice glow in the room, kind of a diffused glow, making it a more of a lamp than a flashlight. The red one was kind of nice in that it did preserve my night vision to a certain degree. I guess it could also be used for directing traffic or signaling somebody. The blue one, I'm not quite sure when I would use that, but it's kind of nice to have all three of these to play with at least. And of interest for this kit is this extension, or it's not so much an extension, it's a replacement for the longer tube because it comes with a shorter battery. So with the flashlight installed is a 5,000 milliamp hour 26650 lithium ion battery. I'll be able to show you that in a moment when I take this, take it off and put this one in. But this tube and this battery, this is a 2,000 milliamp hour 26350 lithium ion battery. So it will still, the light will still have all the same outputs regardless of which battery. It's just it'll have the longer run time with the larger battery. Okay, let me put those aside. One last thing before I focus back in on the light itself is this business card sent to me by Flashlight Brand. And they'd like me to point out that for anyone who does any type of review, and posts it using the flash type, fla or the hashtag flashlight brand, you'll receive a 10% cash back on their next purchase. So let's bring the light back in. So as I mentioned, it does have the 20 6, 650 lithium ion battery included with it as well. But what I want to do is just talk about one of the key features that I may miss otherwise, and that's the fact that this has a magnetic tail base. Now, I thought, find that a bit unusual because this is not your tiny pocket light you might use for uh, doing work around a vehicle or around the home. So most, you know, it's, it's not common to see a light of this size to have a magnetic tail base, but it, it has it and it is strong. So it's a useful thing to have. Have, of course. All right, let's go through the physical specifications for this slide. Overall length. 5.2 inches or 132 millimeters. That's with the longer tube installed. With the shorter tube installed, it would be 3.9 inches or 100 millimeters. The diameter at the basal is 2.12 inches or 54 millimeters. The diameter of the battery tube right out to the end, 1.3 inches or 33.8 millimeters. The weight width 
The uh, longer battery installed is 10.3 ounces, 294 grams. But if I sub out and put the smaller battery in, it comes in at 8.3 ounces, 236 uh, grams. Of course, it does have a one meter impact resistance if dropped, and it is rated at IPX6 waterproof rating. Of course, all the information I just gave you will be in the video description below for your reference. All right, as far as the performance specifications for the Mataminko 911, uh, this is where things get a little challenging for me. I can find no information or very little information on that. What I can tell you, tell you from the literature provided is that there is a turbo of 6,200 lumens with a reach of 926 meters. I cannot tell you what the strobe is or the moonlight or the infinity low or infinity high. If anybody has that information, information and or knows where I can access the information that information please pass it along and I will do so and add it to the video description below. This seems to be consistent with some of the other Mataminko flashlights that I have reviewed in the past. So what I can tell you of course is show you uh, how the operation of this light goes. Very simple operation. Moonlight is a long press and you can see the LED is illuminated. It's very low. I'm going to say it's somewhere in the one to two lumen range. It's barely registering on my tabletop. I can turn it off. If I just give it a short press, the light will come on to whatever the last lumen setting was that I used before turning it off the last time. But if I press and hold the button, infinity ramping will take it all the way up to its highest setting. So that would be infinity high. You can see the camera is compensating for the increased brightness. Of note, there is no flashing when it reaches the top of its range. If I press the button again, it'll ramp all the way down to the lowest. And again, no flashing to show. And you can see the lowest is, I believe, also moonlight. So I'm just going to take it up a little ways and I'll turn it off. Turn it back on, and you can see with memory, it comes on at the last setting. Now, turning the light off, if you want to access turbo, it is a double press of the button. Direct to turbo, and you can see how quickly the camera has to compensate for the increased brightness. And I will show you strobe, so be aware of a strobe about to occur. So that's a triple press, one, two, three, and it goes right into strobe. And again, I can turn it off. All right, one last thing I want to show you before I take the light outside and do some demonstrations is just give you a little bit of a visual tour around the light and then install the shorter battery tube so you can see what that looks like. So the reflector itself is quite deep, but it still has an orange peel finish. So it gives a combination of a very tight, hot, spot or central uh, power point on the light, but it also gives a considerable amount of flood, as you'll see when we get outside. So the body of the light, there's quite a few heat dissipation fins around the front. Now on turbo, this does get hot, but not so hot that you feel like you're going to burn yourself. So uh, I think the heat dissipation is working quite well. You can see the point at which the lanyard would attach. And of course, as I mentioned, it does have a magnetic base. One thing I really like about this, so this is one of the pros for the light, is the on-off button. It is a silicone button and is very tactile and it is raised above the surface of the light making it very easy to find with your thumb without having to look down at the light. However it is mitigated to a certain degree by the USB charging port because directly it is directly opposite. However there, after a little bit of holding on to it you can pretty quickly tell which one is which and you're not going to mistake it. Now there is something I want to point out about the USB charging port if I can get it open here. Uh, this kind of uh, confused me, and then I recognized what was happening, and that is you can see the USB type port, but can you see how deeply recessed it is into the flashlight itself? So this is where I'll bring this cable back in. So it is a USB type C charging cable, but you may note that the end of the charging cable is longer than usual on a lot of other uh, cables of its style. And that's required to get down inside of that recess to reach all the way down. I did try charging this light with some of my other cables and they just weren't long enough to get down inside. A few of them were, but others weren't. So just may be aware of that, that uh, you don't want to lose this one if it's the only one that fits, but it, others will fit but not all of them. So that's just worthy of note. Otherwise, the charging port is well covered with this silicone seal to keep it from, oh, turn the light on accidentally there. 
keep it from uh, getting water or anything in it. Now, I just want to show you the change out for the battery and its tube. So the battery tube can be undone at both ends. I'm just going to take it apart to show you the completeness of it. So here is the larger battery, the, 20, uh, the um, 5000 milliamp 26650 battery. The rest of the tube can come off as well. It takes a little bit of work to get it off. I think I might just put a little bit of Vaseline or petroleum jelly on there. It is dry. It doesn't have anything on it. It's not like I'm going to be taking this on and off very often. So I think I will do that just to ensure that it, it doesn't dry up and remains waterproof there. So here we go with the battery itself. So again, just put the shorter tube on. If I can get it started, here we go. Oh, that's not correct. It's the other way. I should have matched it to the larger tube. Ah, so much easier. So much easier when you do things the right way. There we go. So that's on. Put that in. Put the tail cap back on. All right. So, um, it's virtually the same flashlight as it is with the longer tube, just a little bit more compact for your pocket and a little bit shorter runtime. So it is nice to have that option if you appreciate having that. All right, let's uh, see if we can't get outside and do some testing. All right, we're doing some nighttime testing of the Mataminko MT911 searchlight and doing something a little different rather than working in my backyard. I'm out in front of my house on the street and even with the street lights out here, which are illuminating everything quite well, you're going to really see how powerful and how far this will reach because we're looking at 300 meters probably to the end of the street so let me turn the light on on moonlight and that well oh, i'm actually surprised it actually does show up a little bit on the street out here but kind of bright for moonlight but still pretty dim all right let's turn it off turn it on and ramp it up so now we're at high and you can see even on high this is illuminating like I said, 300 meters up the street, but let's just take it up to turbo. It doesn't look extremely lot brighter, but it is. Now this light has a central hotspot and a lot of flood, but it's that central hotspot that allows you to reach out so far as a searchlight. You can see lots of light, even out here under all these street lights. All right, just before we close this video out, I want to be able to show you how those diffusers work. So I have tested this on camera before, and what I'm finding is that the camera doesn't accurately demonstrate or display the colors as I see them. So what I will do is I will put the red diffuser on and show you what that looks like turning the light on. Now for me, it's red. I know I can see in the camera it's showing through as white. I wonder if I that's going to go all the way to the top. Now, let's see if I can take it all the way down. To me, it's still red. Uh, yeah, again, it's still showing white on the camera for whatever reason, but let me just shift out, put the white one on. I think that's probably the best demonstration. So you can see, let's uh, take it all the way to the top. You can see how much of a light that would be in the room. It's actually overriding all the lighting I have for recording this video. So it's it's a nice option to have. Oh, by the way, it does also glow in the dark. You can probably capture that right now. It'll only last so long, of course, but it is a nice little extra. Yeah, so those diffusers do have value. Um, I don't see myself using them all the time of the three of them probably the white one for area lighting in the room, especially when you have that magnetic base. You can put it down somewhere and give yourself a nice lamp for inside of a room at home or in your tent or if you need it in your vehicle somewhere. I think it's a nice option for doing that with. Okay, having shown you what the light operates like outdoors, let's just go through a few of the pros and cons. I think what I like most about this light is the easy to find button. That's just something that I think is missing on a lot of 
highlights today that if you can't actually find it easily with your thumb or your finger, whatever it is you use to operate it, then it's just a little bit more challenging. Any light that you use should be easy to turn on and off without having to look at it. So I really do appreciate that easy to find silicone button on this light. Um, I appreciate the magnetic tail base on this. It's a nice thing to have. I really love the performance in terms of the flood and the central hotspot. And you saw just how far this will cast as I did out in front of my house here. Now, the one thing that kind of bothers me, and it's just, I don't understand why they don't go that extra step to provide the lumen settings at infinity low and infinity high. I expect infinity low is the same as Firefly or Moonlight in this case, but they still don't give me what the lumen settings are for this. So it's certainly not a deal breaker. As you can see, most people want to know what the maximum output for these lights are. Again, 6200 lumens, so it's a plenty bright light. And you just tailor to whatever it is bright enough for what you need to use it for at the time. Okay, that's all the information I have about the Madame Minko MT911. If you have any comments or any questions, please put those in the comments section under this video. I'll put all the information where you can purchase this light, as well as I mentioned all the specifications in the video description. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path, let's travel, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.